Welcome to this Eurogas Tech Talk, where we look at the European technologies that can help Europe reach climate neutrality and create jobs. My name is Philippa Nuttall-Jones, Editor-in-Chief of Energy Monitor. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to Alix Chambry, Vice President, Group Public Affairs and Sustainability at Weissmann. And we're going to be speaking about gas technologies to decarbonise heating. Hi Alex, nice to have you with us today. Um, perhaps to start, we can explain a little bit more um, why decarbonising home heating is so important for Europe to reach carbon neutrality. Yes, uh, decarbonisation of heating is very important simply because of the, of the statistics. Buildings account for 40% of uh, final energy consumption in Europe and 36% of greenhouse gas emissions. So there is simply no way around. If you want to reach a 2050 net zero, we have to uh, prioritize buildings. And another aspect which is uh, even more important, it's that building, it's about people. And there is no way we can win the energy transition if we don't get the buy-in of people, if we don't demonstrate that the energy transition is not only is affordable, but gives value to people, a better life, a more comfortable life and decarbonized life. And generally, when we talk about the energy transition, we talk about getting rid of fossil fuels. So perhaps you can explain the role of gas in decarbonizing heating then in homes. Gas um, today is a, a very important uh, source of energy because it accounts to close to 50 percent of uh, the entire heating in, in building. You remember I said that 40% of final energy consumption ar arise from buildings, but 85% of that energy consumption is used to, for space heating and hot water. And when you know that half of this uh, space heating and hot water demand is fed by gas, you see how critical this, gas, this uh, source of energy is for Europe. Now, the beauty for gas is that, and, and gas heating, is that it is fossil fuel independent, in fact. Very few people know that gas boilers are today um, ready for, for green gas. We can provide gas boilers that can run on either uh, biomethane, either synthetic gas produced from renewable energy, or hydrogen. So it is completely possible to, to turn the entire gas heating in Europe into green gas. So the idea is then basically that we take fossil fuel gas out of the system, out of the boilers in our homes, and instead we use biomethane or hydrogen. Is that correct? Yes. Now, now you need to adapt the infrastructure. So f first thing is to get the supply. So to, to accelerate the uptake and the production of green gases, including hydrogen. And the, and the parallel step is to secure that the, the space heaters in the European building stock are ready to, to function with these green gases. And it's very important to have that in mind. Space heaters, on average, stay in stock for 25 years. So if today I buy a heater for my home, in 2020, it is very likely I will keep that gas heating up to 2040 and beyond. So the decision that we take today have a high impact on the energy transition tomorrow. So what we are doing with other manufacturers, with EHI and other trade associations, is to, to provide a roadmap to reduce the cost of the adaptation of space heater to the change, uh, changing gas mix. And perhaps you could explain to us a little bit more what, what this roadmap is and, and at the moment how much of this gas is actually providing the heating in Europe. At the EU level there is a new hydrogen strategy which foresees that we will uh, produce at least 40 gigawatt of hydrogen in Europe by 2030 and 40 gigawatt externally in neighboring countries such as Ukraine or Morocco. So we expect um, a speedy ramp up of hydrogen production in Europe and we see a big, a big potential for, for biomethane which, which arises from biogas. And so can you explain how this ramp up will happen in terms of, of the hydrogen production and where this hydrogen, how will it be made? Will it be made from uh, renewables? Is, is, that, is that the goal? 
The hydrogen can be produced from uh, renewable electricity or natural gas with CCS. As a heating, as, as a space heating manufacturer, we, we, we prefer to let the utilities, the gas utilities and electrolyzer manufacturers explain more in depth how you produce hydrogen. What, what we bring to the table is the perspective of the buildings. And what I can share with confidence is that today the entire um, gas boiler stock, which is installed uh, across Europe, can already run with blends of 10% hydrogen. And by blends, I mean a mixture of natural gas with 10% hydrogen in the gas grid. So today it's possible gas boilers can accommodate 10% hydrogen in the gas, in the gas grids. We, we know that we can produce new boilers already today, which can burn up to 20 or 30% uh, hydrogen blends. And we are ready to place on the market hydrogen boiler that are hydrogen ready, meaning they can run today on methane, which is today still uh, the, the, the vast majority of the gas supply. But there is a possibility to retrofit these gas boilers ex post on request and make them suitable to, to run on 100% hydrogen. And we believe that if we do that, we can, we can secure that whatever the gas supply of tomorrow, the gas boiler can handle it. And we're talking about getting to climate neutrality by 2050 to net zero uh, in Europe. Um, reducing the gas, uh, the natural gas in the system by 10, 20 or even 30 percent doesn't sound, sound that ambitious. Is that enough to, to bring emissions down as much as we need in buildings? We need everything. There is no one solution that is strong enough to meet net zero in 2050. We absolutely need to work on all fronts. One front is the electrification, accelerating the uptake of heat pumps. Another is accelerate the uptake of on-site renewable energy. Another is green gas. Uh, a fourth one is um, utilize the potential of hybrid solutions. And can you explain a little bit more what, what would be a hybrid solution? How would that work? A hybrid solution is a, a combination of a gas boiler and a heat pump whenever needed, work either on electricity and, and utilize the, the, the ambient heat, which is the, the main advantage of heat pump. And in winter times, when the peak load is, is extremely high, the, the, the hybrid solution can run on gas. The heat demand in winter is three times higher than in summer, 300% higher, right? And this means that we really need solutions to secure the supply of heat, meaning the supply of energy in winter time, when you electrify at the same time buildings and passenger cars. The more you electrify, the higher the, this peak demand become in winter time and the higher the electricity system costs. So with the hybrid solutions, you can optimize the energy system costs and run on gas when you have a shortage of electricity supply and reduce the need for, for backup um, capacity and so on. There is a study by, by uh, Guidehouse published last year, which showed that if you, if you use smartly the existing gas infrastructure, you can save over 200 billion euros per year compared to a scenario when you only build, uh, bet on electricity. And obviously we're talking about, as you said, people here. It's people's homes we're talking about and, and keeping people warm. Perhaps we could talk a little bit more about boilers themselves and how much would it cost a consumer if they wanted to buy a boiler today that was ready for hydrogen? Does that cost them, cost them more money than just buying a traditional gas heater in their boiler in their home? The, the new boiler that are placed on the market can burn up to 30% up to hydrogen. In our case, the heating industry often uh, like to, to, to tell about 20%. This can be achieved at zero extra cost for the end users. For, for the the boiler that can run on pure hydrogen, we believe we can do it as a marginal cost. And um, for, th for the, the final option, which is buy a boiler that run on methane today, because this is your current situation, and retrofit your boiler a few years later on pure hydrogen if needed. That means you will need to change the, the chamber. 
Um, this can be done at, we, we believe, just a few hundred euros. And this would be done just on request. And we believe very, very seamlessly because people have to maintain their borders anyway every year. So if a change would have to be done, it could be done within the usual maintenance system. You've said that gas um, or decarbonizing gas and, and bringing more green gas into the system is part of the solution of, of reducing emissions from our homes. You've also mentioned heat pumps. Um, various countries such as the UK recently have come out with quite ambitious targets for heat pumps. As a consumer, if I want to have a new uh, boiler in my house, um, how do I decide what is the best solution? Where do I go to get that information? And, and is that something that the governments um, should be explaining to consumers? Or do you think there are other people that should be involved in, in this space? A few weeks ago, Aeon, the, the German utility, performed a survey in Germany by 2,500 consumers to test would they, would they be willing to uh, shift to hydrogen if they had the option. And 67% of the people said, yes, they would definitely switch to hydrogen. So the willingness, the openness to change uh, the gas mix is there for sure. Uh, on the choices, what, what we say in Wiesmann is we have to have an energy transition that is people-centric and leave people choices and have solutions for every uh, financial situation for every building type. And if you live, for example, in a multifamily building with a, uh, apartments on every floor and an individual heating system, it will not always be possible to install a heat pump as simple as that. So we need to have enough solutions for every situation and any every financial capabilities. Let's not forget that today a heat pump is, is still two to three times more expensive than the gas boilers. Not everybody wants to go for that. Um, it's good if they do, uh, but, but, but uh, we need to have solutions for everyone. One of the, the criticisms from, from certain uh, people involved in, in working on decarbonisation is that hydrogen, there will only be a finite amount of hydrogen and hydrogen can be used in lots of other spaces, for example, decarbonising industry. Are you convinced that using hydrogen to decarbonise homes is a good solution? So we think um, first that, that there will be enough uh, hydrogen supply up to 2050. The potential for, for generation and supply could be there. The potential of the generation in Europe for, for, for biomethane and, and hydrogen, which shows that uh, there is enough supply of green gas if we do our homework well, and this homework means renovate, modernize the current buildings and uh, heating systems, because for sure we must ha half the energy demand in buildings. If you have the energy demand of buildings, and then you have a share between electrification and green gas, we believe it's, it's possible. And not only is possible, it is highly needed because if with the optimal mix between green gas and electricity, you reduce the overall energy system costs, which is a very important to secure the affordability of the energy transition. So a large part of the energy transition is also, this is an opportunity to create jobs, especially in this post-COVID world where lots of people have, have lost their jobs and we need to boost the economy. Um, is decarbonizing the, the gas supply and especially the heating in our homes a way of creating jobs? Yes, absolutely. So the, the heating sector is extremely labor intensive because uh, you have to produce the boilers, you have to install them, you have to maintain them. According to the European heating industry, there is uh, 1.8 million uh, direct and indirect jobs in Europe. And the beauty of the heating sector from a policy job creation perspective is that more than 90% of the value change is anchored in Europe. So you have less than 10% import from, from third countries. So every euro you spend in the heating sector generate jobs uh, and not only generate jobs, but it also generates jobs at the local level. What, we, what I find also extremely um, interesting is to know that for every euro in, invested in subsidies in the precious renovation of buildings, you generate six to eight euro of uh, revenues. And, and this means that the, the revenues that goes back 
to the government in terms of tax, VATs, etc., is higher than the one you were invested in the first place. So it's definitely a win-win for all. And do you think there's enough joined up thinking at a, at a policy level to bring this whole sector together? So as you say, to, to modernise in a way the whole value chain, so the whole value chain from the, the renovation to the boilers to electrification is all working together to be, get the best solutions to decarbonise the heating systems? Of course, we are working uh, very closely. We are working closely with the energy suppliers, both electricity, gas, and, and liquid fuels. And we are working very closely with the installers, which are mostly SMEs. And uh, we provide, for example, very intense uh, trainings across Europe. I know all heating manufacturers do the same. There is a big need for, for trainings to embrace the, the transition. You, you all know about the three Ds, decarbonization, decentralization, and digitalization. Digitalization, which is a huge innovation driver in the heating sector, which also offers in great opportunity to increase comfort, to increase well-being, to facilitate maintenance on site. So, for example, gas boilers have connectivity features and the installer can see uh, from his office what is the spare part he needs to change and then, then he can come to your building with the right spare part uh, and repair it on the spot instead of having to come a second or third time. Uh, you have huge um, innovation potential also from this uh, digitalization side. And that will presumably create more jobs as well as, as we go forward. I think it's extremely interesting, this idea of, of the electrification and the gas working together and, and creating the jobs at the same time. If I summarise, Philippa, our, our main point is that decarbonisation is feasible. We have to make it by demonstrating that it brings benefit to the end users and the consumer. So we have to combine decarbonization with uh, improvement in the well-being and comfort and people. The second key takeaway is that for us, green gas is a necessary complement to electrification. And it is the two together that can, that can make a net zero by 2050. Excellent. Thank you very much, Alix. Thank you for being with us today. And thank you to you for joining us for this Eurogas Tech Talk. Please tune in again to hear the next discussion about the gas technologies from Europe that can help reduce emissions and help Europe meet net zero by 2050.